in these next. Mm -hmm. In these next several videos, we're going to be focusing on VSEPR theory or VSEPR theory for short. That's a strategy for us being able to predict and explain the geometry of molecules. The first step to that is to be able to count what are called electron domains. VSEPR or VSEPR stands for valence shell electron pair repulsion. And the purpose of VSEPR is to be able to translate from a Lewis structure, a two-dimensional representation of something like methane. Remember this Lewis structure of methane would be four single bonds. But the real molecule has the carbon in the middle and a hydrogen at the top and another hydrogen sticking out. And then there's a hydrogen that is going backwards into the plane of the computer and a hydrogen sticking out at you. It's what's called tetrahedral. And the reason I've made that prediction is because of Vesper theory. It goes from this 2D Lewis structure to this 3D molecular shape. With reasonable accuracy, Vesper can tell you the bond angle. So it can tell you that the bond angle between this carbon and this hydrogen and this hydrogen is 109.5 degrees. And it can tell you that a molecule is what's called polar or nonpolar, which is going to mean some important things for their properties later. To do VSEPR, we need to count electron domains. Um, other words for these are electron groups. You might see that in some practice problems. Your book calls them electron pairs, and that's actually a term I don't like. So I'd prefer for you to use electron domains or electron groups. And all that an electron group is, is something that's around a central atom. It's much easier to see by example. So when I look at this ASF3 molecule, I see a lone pair and I see three bonds. So I say that this has four electron domains. When I look at this bromate, I see a lone pair, a lone pair, a double bond and a single bond. This also has four electron domains. You notice that thus far, a lone pair, a single bond, a double bond, and a triple bond are all counting as one electron domain. So counting them is super easy. If it connects up to an atom with something else, it doesn't matter how many lines there are, that's an electron domain. If it's a lone pair, it's an electron domain. So similarly down here, we have one, two, three, four, five electron domains. And so is this one, one, two, three, four, five. So if you can draw a Lewis structure, you can count electron domains. So let's try it. Here's some practice. Draw some Lewis structures, count the electron domains. And I strongly suggest you pause this video and you try it. The Lewis structure of CO2 looks like this, carbon double bonded to two oxygens. And what we would say is that carbon has two electron domains. I don't care about the lone pairs on the oxygens because they're what are called peripheral atoms. Usually when I talk about electron domains, it's around what's called the central atom, the one or the ones in the middle. And so carbon is what I care about. Let's try SO2. So here's my Lewis structure of SO2, different from CO2 because I have this extra lone pair around the sulfur. And that's why I would say that the sulfur has three electron domains, the double bond, the other double bond, and the lone pair. Let's move on to ClO3 minus. Chlorate, ClO3 minus has resonance structures. So I've drawn the three options here. And yes, you notice that that chlorine has um, an extra lone pair around it has an expanded octet. Doesn't matter, right? All the formal charges are down to zero and chlorine's in the third period, so it's allowed to do that. Resonance structures also don't matter towards electron domains because remember, doubles and singles count as the same thing. And in all of these, you have an electron domain 
here, 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 and the lone pair. So chlorine has four electron domains. It doesn't matter where they're placed because they all count the same. So four electron domains. Let's do one more. Pause the video and see what happens. Xenon hexafluoride looks just like this. Xenon in the middle with six single bonds around it and each of those fluorines with three lone pairs. But the important part, of course, for fluorine is that fluorine has one, two, three, four, five, six bonding domains. So xenon has six electron domains around it. If you can draw a Lewis structure, you can count electron domains. It's a very simple process. In another video, we're going to follow on to this and turn this into specific shapes and how those will look in 3D.